Okay, this is a, uh, quote, Christmas ornament. It's a nutcracker that uh, we purchased over at Costco. Let's go ahead and throw some batteries into this guy. And as you can see, the little LED lights light up and they flash. Let's, uh, let's put this in manual focus. All right, we are in manual focus and I'll turn off the studio lights and you can see that the uh, LEDs do flash and dance about. Each LED flashes at its own rate. So after it's been on for a few minutes, they get like randomized and uh, it looks really nice. But the problem is this thing shuts off after I think six hours. And uh, the wife wants to run it 24 seven because we work odd hours. Well, I work odd hours. Uh, some days I work days, the day shift, some days I work nights, the night shift. And uh, she just wants it on all the time. So I'm gonna go ahead and pop open the bottom down here where the batteries do live and see if we can bypass the timer basically have a little screwdriver wedged in there so it doesn't fall over so that uh, this thing will run continuously and i'm just going to go ahead and supply a cell phone usb charger to it with one i believe i used a uh, rl207 diode it's a, a two and a half amp 1000 volt dropping diode basically to take the uh, five ish volts and drop it down to about 4.3 volts i don't want to over voltage these things so yeah let's pop the bottom open and see what it looks like inside lights are coming back on watch your eyes there's two three and four lights one moment let's pop the bottom open Oh wow, those are like stripped out already. Way to go. Yeah, it's made in China. China! All the best stuff comes from China. Oh wow, so everything has to be going on in here because there's all the connections for the LEDs. Let's go ahead and put this back in auto focus. And uh, did we lose a battery? Oh yeah, we lost a battery. That's why the lights shut off. So hold this up here. You can take a look inside this thing. And it's just a bunch of yellow and white wires that basically go to each individual LED. So I need to get this guy open. And it looks like it's just got some uh, snap tabs. And oh look, there is the circuit. I if I can pull, oh yeah, okay, that's good. Oops, whoopsie doodles. Pull the circuit board out. Look at that. It has a little clock crystal. And then just a little microprocessor. Let's big clive this. If I can get this out of the way. And uh, we'll zoom in about as far as, there we go. That's the max I can zoom without going into the actual macro mode. So I'm not going to reverse engineer this, but I do believe there is V plus goes to the switch and then the L plus is the one that actually feeds the LEDs. And I do see a possible dropping resistor right there. So let's go ahead and measure some voltages on this connector real quickly. Well, not real quick, we'll measure them at normal speed. So let's zoom out just a bit. And we'll just put this in DC volts. And 
and I assume this is the negative. So this will be battery coming in, 3.9, and then only 2. Point, well, 2.3, 2.4 leaving. So how much drop do we have between the battery and the input to this resistor? Almost nothing. It must be an, a FET in there, FET, field effect transistor. And you can see 1.5 volts, approximate drop across this resistor. So I think all I need to do is run a jumper basically from here to this resistor. And I don't want to overpower these LEDs, like I said. So we're going to keep using the dropping that they have set up in here, which is about 1.6, 1.7 volts. Keep in mind, I do have nickel metal hydride batteries in here as opposed to having uh, alkaline batteries, which would be a slightly higher voltage. <clears throat> but she just wants to be able to have this thing on 24 seven. And I think that's going to be the easiest step is to just uh, bypass all the electronics in this unit. So one moment. All right, so I did measure the value of the resistor and it is 123 ohms, it states 124 ohms. So I'm just gonna go ahead and add a jumper wire from this point over to this side of the switch. Uh, that way the switch will actually still turn the unit on and off if she wants to sh shut it off at some point. And I'm sure this is all crappy lead free solder, so. I'm going to add fresh solder to one side of the resistor and I think I'll go diagonally over to that point right there. So I've got a little lead off of something like a capacitor or something. So I'm going to tin the end of it and we'll just lay it if I can get it to cooperate to hold still. I need a uh, set of helping hands. So we'll just solder it right there. I'll get my little flush cutters. Cut that guy off. Okay, effectively bypassed. So let's go ahead and turn the switch on. Look at that. Well, you can't see it. Let me zoom out. That would help. That's the wrong way, dumb arse. Okay, we'll move some of this stuff out of the way. And it is flashy. Now this thing should run 24 seven, no questions asked. So what I've done is and here I've got my nickel metal hydride batteries that I use. Um, so I've taken some really cheap, basically I think they're zinc carbon, the cheap old batteries that come with these units. And I soldered a wire onto one end of one battery and another wire onto the other end of another battery. And I just leave the third battery out. So they're basically acting as placeholders and nothing else. And so this is going to be the negative side. This will be the positive side. We just pop those batteries into it. It's wired to a cell phone charger with a, like I said, a, I think it's an RL207 diode. There are the diodes. The uh, nomenclature is an RL207. It's a two amp, 1000 volt diode. Uh, I just have them, so I use them. Why not? So let's look at the voltage drop at basically like three milliamps, 0.556 volts. So let's drop in half a volt, just over half a volt, probably a little more under current. So yeah, there we go. Um, I've got two of these. So, and I've, I've got a third one that is a, a huge Christmas ornament, like you'd hang on your tree, one of the balls you hang on the tree. And it's got white LEDs on it. They just stay on constant. Uh, I do have, 
aspirations of installing uh, multicolored LEDs, which you've probably seen on a previous video. These are multicolored flashing LEDs. They basically change from red, white, and blue. And I've got a slow flash that is like one flash every five seconds and a fast flash that's like what's in here, like one flash every second. So if time allows, which I haven't really had much of recently, I will pull all the white LEDs out of the huge Christmas ornament that we purchased at Costco and replace them with individual flashing LEDs like this unit has. But I think that's going to be it. Disabling the timer in your Costco nutcracker. Well, nutcracker, but I like to say nutcracker. So I'm just going to go ahead and pop the board back in here because the switch is still active, so it can be turned off if necessary. I realized that the microprocessor is probably still drawing some very uh, low quiescent current. I'm not even worried about that. Whatever happens, happens. Snap it all back together. I mean, I could get really tricky and uh, basically install a USB jack out of his little bottom down here, but I think this will be perfectly fine. All right, well, there it is. The Nutcracker from Costco. These are like, well, we probably had them three or four years. They're very pretty sitting out on the fireplace mantle. Everyone, thanks for watching. Have a great day. Bye-bye.